Hus paklisne, ge en gulka, gå en nasogen. Aakef makaka ane ninko, aakef man ene. Man katwene, man etkene, aakef wenes, man kakene. Gaa, aakef utsat kao khaki, aakef utsat ene, nasogen. Nene ke isogen, daha. My name is Sophie Pierre, and I'm the Chief Commissioner for the BC Treaty Commission. I never started out thinking that I was going to be the chief of my community for 30 years. I thought I would be a chief for a couple of years. I mean, I'm young, eh? I figured that I'm going to get this job done in just a few years' time and move on to something else. When I started to work for my band, it was right in, in 1971, 72. That was an incredible time. I mean, we're talking about sit-ins and <laughs> protests and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I've always uh, figured that I'm, I'm pretty much of a, a conciliator type of person. But I mean, I was right in there with the sit-ins and that's how we made change happen in those days. And then when I got elected, there were not a whole lot of Aboriginal women that were in chief positions across this country. There are more today, uh, still not enough as far as I'm concerned, but uh, there are definitely more and, and we have more of, um, of a support network amongst ourselves. But certainly when I started, that, that wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. I went to residential school, spent nine years there, and the opportunities for Aboriginal people were pretty limited when I was growing up, and particularly for young women. I had some good support, I had some good uh, mentorship, through my own family with my mother and my grandmother. Um, but then I also um, had some good support from people that, that I met in the city of Cranbrook. And uh, this one uh, gentleman that I really credit with giving me the confidence to get off the res and do something was, um, his name was D Donald McDonald, and he ran a pharmacy. And uh, he hired me, and I was one of the first Aboriginal people that ever worked in the city of Cranbrook, like in, an, in a store, you know. <laughs> so that started, that opened a whole new world for me. And um, I just went from there. I went off to, to college, took some business administration, and I got a call from my people. And they just said, look it, you've got education and we need somebody here, um, you know, that has the education that you've taken. And, you know, we think you need to come home and work for, for the nation for a few years and so I did. If I had stayed in that drugstore, although it was a good start for me, if I had stayed there and never got into political life, I never would have been able to meet and work with the kind of people that, that, I've, that I've met. I think that you guys have just done an absolutely outstanding job. I think it's always important for young people to be able to see what are the possibilities. And I think that when, when a young woman sees that another woman in the position of chief or mayor or MP or prime minister, a young woman sees another woman in that position, then she realizes the, the possibilities are there. We've come together here to share that message. There are no barriers unless, except those that you make yourself that or that you allow to be there. And this is where mentorship comes in because sometimes you create barriers you don't know you've created. And if you have a mentor, they help you get past that. It's really important for women who've had the experience to pass on that message in order to get other young women to start thinking about that and accepting that responsibility. There are barriers for any woman to get into politics, I think, because you're trying to balance families, you're trying to balance work, you're trying to balance everything, and it's no one has the right answer, and I think um, the best you can do is just try your best.
lot of people think that they can't do it, that they don't have the voice to be a leader. They they um, really doubt their confidence, but all you really need to do is have a heart for your community and you can be a very effective leader and politician. From my political world, uh, the, the women were always coming together. I mean, always. No matter where we were, uh, what meetings we were at. But I think the reason that that happens is it comes from our tradition. Because women had very strong support systems, traditionally societies and things. And we're very much respected in, at an equal place in our community, in British Columbia anyway. If you look at our communities, the ones that are going through grade 12, going through post-secondary, going through law school, the majority of them are women. I mean, statistically, the women are the ones that are carrying forward with our education. Therefore, we should be looking at them to carry forward with our self-government. I think that the St. Eugene development is, is an integral part of our continued growth as a nation. It's been proven that um, when you have women in leadership positions, not necessarily the chief, but definitely on council, you have a much more progressive council and you see so many things happening in the community. Because as women, you know, we're, we're nurturing, we've got family responsibilities, and when you have a healthy family, it's easy to start working on a healthy community. You have a healthy community, you work on a healthy nation. And so you look around anywhere, and you, where you see that the whole, like the nation of Aboriginal people, the whole nation moving ahead, you look in that um, and you'll find that there are a lot of women that have been part of the decision making. That's why that nation's been able to get ahead. talk a little bit about the, um, the Treaty Commission and about you know, what, what our mandate is and why we're doing what we're doing. So. Every individual has something to offer. The knowledge that's been given to me is not mine to keep. I have no ownership of that. My responsibility is to pass that on. And while getting in political life is a lot of work and you have to work at, at the whole balancing with your family and everything, it is very rewarding. So it, it is a rewarding career for a young woman to get involved in. It'll open up an, um, a whole new world for you. And it's rewarding in terms of what you can gain, and it's just as rewarding, if not more so, in terms of what you can give and how that makes you feel at the end of the day.